Bernard, welcome to the program. I know you are you were at least interested in art such as uh, Stivlin, which is a kind of painting style, um, and you used that in your college time to to do some charity work. What was the idea? What's your passion about art? And tell us a bit about that and how that influences your passion for arts now. Well, thank you for the questions. Uh, I was very sick when I was in college, so I have to took some time off. And during the time off, I got myself into arts because I thought that was uh, maybe uh, a chance for me to get some credit as well. And turns out I fell in love with uh, art. Uh, I'm actually uh, studio art I'm talking about, not just study of arts, but actual practice of art. So I had actually graduated with a studio art degree in college, but I never thought that I'm going to have any use to that degree, especially coming back to Hong Kong, to Asia, because I don't think uh, to most people in Asia, they will consider art as a, you know, a, a degree that you can actually get a job uh, professionally, at least uh, at the time. But amazingly, time has changed. And you look at today, especially to the young generation, I mean, they don't just look at professional jobs anymore. I mean, I mean, of course, professional job is still uh, considered a, a, a popular choice, but people also you know, want to go into music, arts and everything. So, uh, and I think that was the right thing uh, to Hong Kong want to embark on. So uh, it turns out it's an amazing blessing for me because uh, I happen to have that sort of a background and appreciation that allows me to do what I'm doing today. Yeah, so basically you are living your passion. You're not working, right? You're just uh, enjoying your passion for art. Uh, as your chairman of the board for the Hong Kong Palace Museum, exciting news. Um, I'm a big fan of the Palace Museum in Beijing. It's not just about the, the arts, the, the culture, but it's that symbol, you know, that, that, that part of us, right? That a long history that's run through generations after generation. So we know the Hong Kong Palace Museum will open to public on July the 2nd. So when the news announced, right, uh, a lot of reaction on the Chinese social media, but what was the idea behind it to bring Palace Museum, or at least part of it, to Hong Kong? And uh, it took a couple of years, right, till the idea was materialized in the building that we're seeing now. How, how, how long has it been, uh, how, what's the journey like? Yeah. Well, long before uh, the idea to bring uh, Palace Museum to Hong Kong, there's always been some partnership going on between the museum, the local museum in Hong Kong, and Palace Museum Beijing. And these exhibitions uh, that we held in Hong Kong always turns out to be very popular, and people love it. You know, people waited hours to, to get tickets and so on. So we knew that there will always be uh, um, interest with uh, you know these national treasures. So the idea came about five years ago. Uh, uh, our then chief executive, Carrie Lam, in her visit to Beijing. And I mean, she herself also a big fan of Palace Museum Beijing as well. So I was told that it's, you know, in, one, in one of those visits, uh, she you know, paid a visit to uh, the museum director of Palace Museum. And there you are. I mean, they, the idea came, of course. Uh, they also have to seek the blessing from the central government as well. Uh, and, and then, the rest is history. Uh, it's amazing that we, you know, are now able to bring um, Palace to Hong Kong. Now, Palace Museum Hong Kong is not a branch of Beijing Palace. You know, it's a complete standalone museum. But of course, with a very a close partnership with Beijing Palace, because we don't actually have our own collection yet. So much of uh, those uh, treasures that we are, you are now seeing at our at our opening in Hong Kong I, you know, came from um, Beijing. Uh, in, in fact, uh, for our first exhibitions, there are at least uh, uh, 914 uh, national treasures being now displayed in Hong Kong. Right, and I understood, I, I heard that the Chinese uh, President Xi Jinping, for instance, personally attended the, the signing ceremony for the cooperation agreement. He had great support for the whole project. And I know that, uh, uh, as you mentioned, over 900 artifacts are on display, and some of them are national treasures, 116, for instance, a level one artifacts. Um, so how were these artifacts chosen, and what do you want to show to the people of Hong Kong? You know, I'm, in fact, I, I'm always amazed among the 1.8 million pieces of artifacts uh, in, in, in the collections, in um, Beijing Palace Museum collection. How did we come up with this uh, 914? So clearly, a lot of work been done behind the scene uh, between the, the curators in Hong Kong, as well as their counterpart in Beijing. So they, they work very closely and, and decide on these 900 pieces that will best showcase 
uh, the Chinese civilization. Now, as you know, uh, besides these 900 pieces, we also got a loan uh, from the Louvre Museum in Paris, because we also want to create this uh, so-called dialogue between different civilizations, obviously right. predominantly Chinese civilization, but also as Western. So there are a lot of work behind uh, in deciding, you know, what should be displayed. Together with local, we also have collections uh, among, uh, well, because we, we, we don't have our own, but we have many collectors in Hong Kong, you know, so they donated their, their pieces to us as well. So they're being showcased as well. And together with local Hong Kong uh, designers, because it's the way how we feature these displays also uh, make a huge difference. There is a very strong traditional Chinese culture uh, heritage in Hong Kong. Uh, and you mentioned sporadically in the past uh, relics from the mainland, from the Palace Museum, were on loan in Hong Kong as well. How come it's taken so long for such a um, standing institution to be opened in Hong Kong so that it, treasures from traditional Chinese mainland on the, main, uh, on the mainland are able to be housed in Hong Kong on a more permanent basis? Well, as you know, we you know we have been uh, under you know, British colonial uh, rule for so many years, 150 years, and even myself, uh, uh, growing up in Hong Kong, our exposure to Chinese culture and Chinese history is rather limited. I mean, we we do get to learn, but it's largely from textbooks. So, and we don't, yeah, and back in the days, we don't travel to the mainland that often, not like today. So, you know, it's not quite the same when you're just reading off about our past. Uh, about civilization just from textbook. Uh, it's no different when you study history about, you know, the Western civilization also. So uh, I think, you know, I think after 25 years of the returning to the mainland, it's about time that I think uh, we should have, you know, a, a museum like Palace Museum in Hong Kong to, uh, to allow us to feature our own culture, our own civilization. And also, also to demonstrate that how our civilization is actually connected to the rest of the world as well. And, and, it's, and I think it's through these objects that our young generation or even myself get to understand and appreciate, oh, wow, you know, you know, we are connected to the world way, way, you know, <laughs> before our generation, you know, so, so I think this is important timing. Yeah. Um, how much of a difference do you expect this project to have on the young people? Obviously, from what happened in the past few years, it is pretty clear that they're not uh, well versed on the history of China or the, the, the cultural heritage or the identity of being a Chinese. Um, do you think they're going to take in the messages, the stories positively? Well, I, I obviously, we, um, our museum is going to work very closely with the schools. I think, and I think the school would definitely want to work with us as well and want to uh, uh, allow their school children to come to our museum because you know, we do have a lot of educational uh, programs and classes and to learn about, you know, the past, right? I know sometimes, you know, we might disagree about current politics, right? But we're not talking about current politics. We're talking about hundreds and thousands of years of history and that we should not you know, disagree on, right? So we should all know where our roots are. And I, so I think there's going to be uh, welcoming uh, among educators uh, and using a museum as a source. I mean, they can, you know, obviously, I mean, the school can continue to teach whatever they're teaching, but here you are, you have a museum that, you know, you can actually go and physically see something and touch something. Well, maybe not touch something, but you can come and, and appreciate that. And, and as well, and, and we are going to be, uh, and apart from just uh, all these um, objects, we're using technology as well, because I think the young young generation will appreciate a bit more immersed uh, right. experience. So we're going to provide that as well in our museum. More interactive experience they can have. Well, um, obviously not enough was done in um, sharing the cultural heritages of uh, China with the younger generation. Is it too late uh, to, to start now? And also there are actually people talking about there are cultural differences, even civilizational differences between a Hong Kong uh, people, the Hong Kong young people who grew up in Hong Kong, who didn't, who doesn't know so, who don't know so much about uh, the Chinese culture, and the Chinese uh, population who are, you know, who grew up in a very Chinese environment. Are there these kind of clashes potentially? It's never too late. Uh, in fact, I think we should definitely start now. Uh, it's important that you know, even you know, we're just 
I mean, honestly, we're just a river uh, away from the mainland. And so our two cultures uh, do connect. I mean, there's a lot of common um, history and roots between Hong Kong and the mainland. But yes, there are differences, definitely. I mean, uh, the upbringing are different. I have to say, you know, me growing up, um, mainland is still very foreign to me. Mainland China is very foreign to me. And then I have to say that we used to think that, well, you know, we are, we are far more advanced than Hong Kong. But over the last 20 years, it's amazing. I mean, in fact, I feel a little bit uh, of shame right now because mainland China is moving so fast, especially in terms of the applications of uh, technology. They're so far ahead of us. Uh, the use of technology is, is, is so common. So there's a, I mean, yeah, there are differences, but we should learn how to respect the differences. And I think that, that that's what the museum, uh, we, we, don't, we don't just have the, the Palace Museum, we also have the M Plus Museum, which is the contemporary art museum right next door to the, to the Palace Museum. And hopefully through these, um, uh, in, these museums and other art institutions, the people can learn to how to appreciate the differences. Right? I think that's important. And it's not just about Hong Kong and the mainland, it's actually China and the rest of the world as well. I mean, uh, yeah, we, we might disagree a lot of time in politics and so on, but you know, when it comes to culture and art and the roots, there's a lot of common grounds that we can right. share and, and learn to appreciate each other. Absolutely. But for the naysayers, for the, for the detractors, is the fear grounded that uh, embracing the Chinese culture could erode the so-called multiculturalism in Hong Kong? Well, there, there's always going to be someone who's going to be um, uh, put, um, demonize everything we do, right? There's always going to be that group of people uh, and put fear into the people. But honestly, though, I think, you know, once you walk into the museum, then you got to appreciate it, right? Because, you know, in five years ago, when we first announced the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the constructions of the Palace Museum, yeah. there were critics, you know, there were critics out there and saying, oh, is this going to be just another you know, brainwashing exercise on the mainland? Well, you can say whatever you want to say, but today the museum is open. You go inside, you tell me, you know, what, what's, your, what's your take home value when you walk out of it? I think you will learn to appreciate a lot of the cultures and the treasures and the, the, you know, the Chinese civilization. And again, we don't just feature Chinese civilization alone. We do have Western civilization and we, and we want to create that dialogue right. you know, within those different civilizations. So I think the truth is, you know, you, you can see it from it. You don't, you know, you don't have to listen to me, but you walk in there and you tell me. So I think for those who continue to, uh, you know, feel, um, you know, to have doubt, well, it was going to take time, but I, I encourage them to walk in there and see it from themselves. Yeah. And basically just to know who we are, how we come uh, to this day, you know, what make us uh, Chinese. Um, finally, um, it's very interesting design, that building, right? It has a very unique shape to it. For those who do not understand Chinese culture, probably it's a little bit difficult to understand. Uh, could you help us understand the, the Chinese philosophical or cultural <laughs> connotations behind that design? Yes, when we decided to build the Hong Kong Palace Museum, now obviously we cannot compare ourselves to the Beijing Palace Museum because that, the whole setting is different. Uh, Beijing Palace Museum is, is in the Imperial Court, and, and it actually looks strange on that you know modern harbor to have a completely wooden <laughs> traditional Chinese pavilion. And exactly because our setting is different, because you know our museum is is right at the edge of the uh, the, the peninsula and right mm -hmm. at the harbor, the Victoria Harbor. So so our setting is different, but we do want to have certain features from the Beijing Palace Museum. So right. the shape, the 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 roof, the choice of color also uh, sort of uh, resemble the Beijing Palace Museum. But we do have the, our own features because of the fact that we are right by the harbor. So the feature inside, we have the atrium looking at the harbor. The whole setting is very different. And that's exactly what I think Hong Kong uh, should look like. You know, we, we should not be just the same as any other cities in China. We right. should be a place where we connect the east and west. So I think that I think that's the whole purpose behind the, the whole architecture of our museum. Great. I really look forward to visiting the museum myself when the restrictions are lifted. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. We welcome you to Hong Kong. Thank you. Thank you very much.